third stage, of, or I'm sorry, the third theory that Piaget uh, created in his learning theory is the stage of cognitive development. And he believed that biology affected our cognitive development in four stages. He also believed that everyone went through these stages at different ra age ranges, but every child will go through every stage. So that's why you see the, um, the range in the ages of each of the stages. It's not at one certain age. It's sometime around these ages a child will go through each of these four stages. And I know um, I, when you work with children, I'm sure each of you will be able to make a connection to these different stages. The first stage is the sensory motor stage. This is from birth to age two. And this is where children learn about the world through using their senses and also their motor skills. And this is where we see newborns, young children, and toddlers uh, using their hands. They put their hands in their mouths. They hold things. Um, they begin to explore and use their bodies to see what's around them. Um, we have a characteristic called object permanence in this stage. And this is where they learn that an object is no longer in their sight and they think it's gone forever. So I know with young babies, that's why the game of peekaboo is so exciting. When they can't see your face, they think you're gone. And when you pop back in, they're so surprised because they don't understand you're still right there. Or if you take a toy and you hide it behind your back, they're surprised when it shows back up. So these are the way their brain is is processing that they don't really understand how the world works around them and they're discovering this. Also, in this stage, we see children very egocentric. Um, this is where we, we know that everything that they think about is from their own point of view, their own emotions, their own um, con cognitive concepts, and they don't understand to factor in other people's feelings. They only think about themselves. Uh, unfortunately, some people never outgrow that um, characteristic, and we see especially the next level of learners pre-operational, some children hang on to that egocentric point of view and never develop empathy until later on. But definitely babies are ego egocentric because the world does revolve around them. And that's good for them at this stage. That's how they get the trust and um, security needed for healthy brain development. Now, when we move from the first stage into the second stage, we look at children around the ages of two to seven, and this is called the pre-operational stage. And this is a huge stage for their language and problem solving of thoughts and thinking uh, becomes much more logical. In this um, stage, we see children trying to figure things out and explore on their own, and uh, the concept of conservation begins to become developed. And this is the understanding that the quantity of objects stays the same even if something changes in appearance. And so one of the things we see with pre-operational learners, if you have um, seven beach balls and you have seven tiny bouncy balls, it's still seven even though the beach balls take up a lot more space. And this is that conservation where they understand that appearance can be sometimes deceiving. You'll know a child is in this stage when they kind of get a grasp of that. If you ask children on the younger end of this stage, they will tell you there are more beach balls because they're, they're bigger. Um, and, and you'll see that as they begin to change, they start to understand that um, the world works in tricky ways and you have to be very careful about your thinking and not just look at one aspect of it. And that they apply that to a lot of different experiences. Again, we see a lot of children in this stage still being egocentric because they still are looking at the world from their point of view. Um, I think what we see is toward the middle or end of this stage, they're really developing empathy and starting to think of others and start to work as a group instead of just worrying about themselves all the time. And our third stage, which is the last one we'll talk about, is the concrete operational stage. And this is for seven to 11 year olds. So those of you who want to work in elementary schools and work with our 
first, second, third, fourth graders, this is the area of learner you will deal with. And it's interesting because as a first grade teacher for much of my career, there are children that are still pre-operational at the end of first grade. And then there's children that are concrete operational from the beginning of first grade. So you see that they all shift into the new stage at different ages. But it's very clear when they've made that shift. Concrete operational students think very concretely, and that's, that's why it's named. They're very logical, and they can solve mental problems. They can reverse operations. This is where we see the math really changing from the very basic memorization of numbers and shapes and coins. Like Everything that's basic is pre-operational. But then when you ask them to start manipulating things and trading things, it becomes very clear who's in this stage because it is... Um, they can fully understand very complex topics. Um, I look at my little one, and this morning she was practicing for a math assessment where she had to count coins. She had to count all four coins, the penny, the nickel, the dime, and the quarter, to a, up to a dollar. And she's very good at that. And then I ask her to show me if you have 37 cents, how could you have 37 cents in another way that would take up less coins in your pocket? And she had to do some trading. So she'd trade her two nickels for a dime and her five pennies for a nickel. And then she could trade her two dimes and a nickel for a quarter. Um, children that are asked to do that kind of concrete thinking have to not only understand how much the money is worth, but know that you can manipulate it dif different ways. So if I ask you to show me 37 cents, there's like... 20 different ways to do it. Um, also, for homework last night, she had to represent numbers in many forms. So she had to look at the number 14, and she had to draw different ways to show 14 of something. She did tally marks. She did 14, um, I'm sorry, she did 10 plus 4. She did 20 minus 6. She drew um, ten, a, a rod, which is 10 cubes and then four little cubes aside each other for tens and ones. She did 14 cents out of coins. Um, I'm trying to think of all the different ways she did. But she understands that the number 14 can be represented in several different ways. This is an example of the concrete operational thinker that they understand that 14 is more than just one number. It's a variety of different things. Our pre-operational learners do not understand the complexity of information. Um, and I have to say that when we're talking about these stages of Piaget, it's the areas that are logical and mathematical um, that become the targets of the shift um, in their stages. When I look at language and literacy, um, it's very cut and dry. And we learned, you know, that's that uh, that's the stage or the I'm sorry, the type of knowledge that is more socio-conventional we talked about on the last slide and it doesn't you don't have to manipulate it so much but now we're taking things and basically look at them deeper and that's where we do look at the mathematical side so it's important to know where your student is to understand how they are thinking Let me talk about developmentally appropriate practice if you have a pre-operational learner you might share some of these concrete operations with them every day, but if their brain is not ready to be in that stage, it won't make sense to them. So again, we look at some of these other theories that impact or work together to figure out how children best learn, and we see that overlap, and this is one of those areas. Uh, basically, when we're looking at our learner, the implications for teaching are we need to have a learning environment where we're giving them experiences and content and learning materials that match their developmental stage and asking them to do tasks that represent their stage and not a stage that they're not in yet.